Harry's Wife Part 88.7 Damage Control Smaller bird, beautiful side, delicious dessert. Smaller bird, beautiful side, delicious dessert. Smaller bird, beautiful side, delicious dessert. Yes, that has been the mantra that has been chanted by the minions at Tudor Towers in the last 24 hours. In fact, they seem to have enjoyed it far too much, and that necessitated the application of the electric cattle prod to bring them back into line. As you are well aware, dear viewers, a tortured workforce is a productive workforce, and one cannot have the minions getting a little bit too exuberant. That will never do. Nevertheless, leaving matters of indentured servitude to one side, that encyclopedia of news, the Daily Star, caught my eye with an article headlined, Harry's wife's image is everything, and Ellen Show was damage control, claims expert. An article by Simon Hamelienko tells us, Harry's wife's recent interview with American TV chat show's host Ellen has been branded and an attempt to redeem herself by a royal expert. As always, I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the material I provide you with the analysis. Duncan Larcombe, author of Prince Harry, The Inside Story, believes the appearance of the Duchess of Sussex on The Ellen Show was damage control. I shouldn't imagine that will have been a particularly different, difficult book to write. It'll be one of those publications that has the thick cardboard pages to pad it out, so it makes you think you're getting more content than you actually are. And I suppose inside there would just be a series of stick drawings done in crayon, showing the Ginger Prince getting his pink pancakes out in Las Vegas, showing him supping some champagne, showing him opening a factory, showing him shooting some wildlife, showing him shooting a gun in the desert, chasing after skirt around London and then eventually getting involved in some spicy poontang with Harry's wife and then a picture of him looking glum outside the chicken coop. There we are, all done and dusted. A right riveting read. Anyway, returning to the article, Mr Larcombe explains that Harry's wife's Ellen appearance is her attempt to redeem herself after her court blunder, where she <coughs> misremembered facts. The Duchess of Sussex was forced to apologise to the court over forgetting emails, <laughs> we've all done it, during litigation in a case against Associated Newspapers Limited, who publishes the UK's The, e the Mail on Sunday newspaper. As we know from previous reportage, the appearance on the show, which ought to have been bland, ought to have been labelled bland beige and magnolia, was quite simply a PR exercise. Harry's wife will have been advised, "You need to go on there and make yourself relatable." So tell some hilarious anecdotes about scrunchies and a made-up story about crawling through a vehicle, and everybody will love you. Distract, of course, from the court blunder that has occurred. And that's the continued assertion of control by the appearance, the assertion of control over the audience, both television and in studio, and attempting to do so over Ellen, as you've seen from the relevant segments. She was certainly less than impressed by her guest, barely containing her boredom at the appearance of the Queen of Beige. The article continues to explain... Harry's wife forgot emails she had exchanged with an aide who was briefing authors regarding an authorised biography about her and Prince Harry. Speaking to Closer, Duncan said, Having to apologise for misremembering facts in court is a blow to Harry's wife. She's caused chaos for herself and has now somewhat lost control of the narrative. And Harry and Harry's wife, scratch out Harry's name, Harry's wife like to have their voices heard and share their so-called truths. Now, of course, this again demonstrates, although there's an attempt at damage control by the appearance on Ellen, 
it actually backfires because, first of all, the interview itself was at a dross, which has caused so many people to comment as such, seeing straight through it as a PR exercise, finding it completely boring. All of the anecdotes that she provided were dull, 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 and indeed in certain instances it has resulted in the usual cacophony of voices suggesting that anecdote's made up, what do you mean about the children, you're not getting up during the night to deal with the teething, you have a nanny that'll do all of that, so it backfires. Because the more that she attempts to try and portray herself as, hey, I'm just like you, notwithstanding the fact that I'm a multimillionaire that lives in a, a Montecicco mansion with 27,000 flushing toilets, I am honestly just like you. And hey, I was poor once, except I portrayed that I wasn't in the TIG. So which is it? Was I poor? Was I not? Who cares? But by doing all of that, it immediately prompts people to pick it apart and therefore creates further challenges. Moreover, it's demonstrably a PR exercise. The responses of Ellen, where she could barely contain how utterly bored she was, and of course, she toyed with Harry's wife through the so-called pranks that she had her engage in, more of that on another occasion, again demonstrates that it backfired. Of course, in Harry's wife's world, she will believe that it all went exceptionally well because her narcissism will cause her to believe that in her usual deluded way. But also then, of course, all of those things are reported on in the mainstream media, social media, etc. And it results in articles such as this from the Daily Star, while the whilst the unimpressed Mr. Larkham brings up the fact that this was just an attempt to distract from the court blunder. So attempting to deflect from the court blunder has backfired because it's just made people talk about it all the more. Law of unintended consequences turning up once again. And that demonstrates once more the in-the-moment activity of Harry's wife without actually thinking it through. The PR advice should be lay low, disappear from the public eye for a while. Therefore, you won't have those repeated threats to the control. Of course, her PR company don't see it in that way, but that would be the totality of what would happen. Stay out of the way. Lie low. Don't keep popping up. But of course, that will not suit her, because her narcissism screams, you are important. You are the empress of woke. You need to keep telling the world how it is. Don't let these haters, these racists, get you down. And therefore, Driven by her narcissism, she's made to feel indignant, furious, hurt. And therefore, she also believes that it is her divine right that she should be setting the record straight, that she should be showing that, on the one hand, she is this amazing author and TV actress and producer and creator, but at the same time, she's a mum fighting for parental rights, and also don't forget that she's completely relatable to everybody that she talks to. She is trying to face too many ways at once, demonstrating once again that her narcissism isn't up to the job of asserting control within the circles that she now moves. And this article demonstrates that it was about damage control, which of course you all know means the assertion of control, the nullification of threats to control, and propping up the facade. Of course, Mr. Larkham identifies correctly that she's caused chaos for herself and has somewhat lost control, and identifies that she needs to have the narrative. And he also has a little dig there about sharing their so-called truths. He sees straight through them. Continuing with the article, Harry's wife's image and reputation are absolutely everything to her. Indeed, it's part of the assertion of control, the ability to draw fuel, and that facade. So if either of those things are negatively affected, she's got to do something to rectify things. The Ellen interview was, in my view, a form of damage control. The Duchess of Sussex previously won the battle with Associated Newspapers Limited over the publishing of a letter she wrote to her father, Thomas Markle. Associated Newspapers Limited is currently challenging the ruling and believes a trial should take place. It has been rumoured 
that Harry's wife and Harry may give up a may give a top up interview. A top up interview. I thought the only thing you topped up was your glass or the fuel in your tank, but there we are. They may give a top up interview to Oprah Winfrey following the one earlier this year, which saw the Duke and Duchess of Sussex drop bombshell claims. The first interview with Oprah in March saw controversial claims made by the couple over racism within the royal family. Revision of history, telling of lie, assertion of control, pity play. They also revealed the extent of Harry's wife's mental health issues while working as a royal and how they were disregarded. Revision of history, pity play. She claimed a lack of support left her feeling suicidal. The interview also caused Royal experts to question why the couple chose to speak out in a high-profile interview after previously claiming they wanted a private life by moving from the United Kingdom. Hypocrisy. And, of course, this article drives straight through what's going on, identifies that the behaviours are, of course, all about that facade management, as he sees it as damage control, and, of course, once again, evidences the collateral consequences, that the harder she tries to limit the damage caused by her own behaviour, the more problems that occur. But remember, she will not sit there and think, hang on, what if I just stop? What if I disappear for a while? That's not going to cause any problems then, is it? No, she can't see it. Her narcissism will not let her see that she is the problem. And I know repeatedly, and I see it in the comments, as people ask, will she ever notice? When is she going to stop? When will she realise that it's her behaviour that causes the problems? And you ought to know by now from listening to my work, and therefore if you haven't, you need to listen again, that quite simply, she's never going to learn. The type of narcissist that she is never does learn, because the narcissism won't let her. In her world, you're all the problem, she's not. She's right, you're wrong. She is just trying to live her private life whilst at the same time doing good things around the world. And it's all of you that are the haters. It's all of you that are horrible and awful. When you point out her hypocrisies, you're just being mean. When you identify her contrary behaviours, you're being unpleasant. When you call out her poor fashion choices, you're just being plain nasty. She cannot see any of this because her narcissism always rejects that accountability. It has to do so to enable her to remain in control, and therefore she will continue to blame shift and blame shift and blame shift again and again and again. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>